Hello and welcome. Fleet Maintenance Magazine is pleased to present this webinar, Shell Rotella and the New Heavy Duty Engine Oil Categories. It is brought to you by Shell Rotella Heavy Duty Engine Oil. I am Mike Schmidt, the Managing Editor of Fleet Maintenance, the only publication that is all maintenance, all management, all vehicle classes, all the time. And it is my privilege and pleasure to serve as your webinar moderator. After nearly 10 years, the American Petroleum Institute is introducing a new heavy-duty engine oil category, PC-11, with two subcategories, CK-4 and FA-4. A step forward in engine technology, these new engine oils, which will come to market starting this December, are intended to provide greater protection in three key areas without any compromise in wear performance. Here to discuss these new oil specifications and the impacts on fleets are Dan Arce, Global OEM Technical Manager for Shell Rotella, and Chris Guerrero, Global Heavy Duty Diesel Engine Oil Brand Manager for Shell Rotella and Shell Romula Heavy Duty Engine Oils. Just a few housekeeping <laughs> items before we get started. You can participate in today's webcast by submitting your questions to both Dan and Chris. Simply type those questions into the question window box on the bottom right hand of your screen, then hit the submit button. We will be answering as many of those questions as possible during the Q&A session that will follow our presentation. However, please feel free to send along your questions at any time and we'll add them to the queue. Also, if at any time your slideshow does not seem to advance, just press F5 to refresh your browser. Let me also note that after today's live event, this webinar will be archived and available to viewers at Fleet Maintenance Magazine online in the Media Center's section and on Shell's website. Now, without further ado, here's Dan Arce to get things started. All right, thanks, Mike. And welcome, everyone. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to come listen to us uh, this afternoon as we discuss a lot of the changes that are taking place in the heavy-duty industry in regards to heavy-duty engine oils. On our agenda for today, we'd like to take you through the creation of the new category, what, what took place in the development of this category and what it means to you. We also want to take you through what is the next evolution of the hard-working protection for Shell Rotella. And, and then take some questions and have some discussion and tips for your business. Now, one of the things that we aren't going to talk about today is pricing. So that's something that we'll have to do at a later time. Um, but again, if you have questions, please submit them, and we will review them and, and go through with everybody at the end of this webinar. So with that, um, I'd like to go ahead and get started. What we wanted to talk about first was the creation of this new category. And when you look at the heavy-duty category that we've had and developed in the past, um, the current one being API CJ4, this category has been in place for, for a number of years. In fact, it's been in place for 10 years, probably the longest of any category uh, that, that I've been involved with. But the real need in the drivers for this category came from a need for improved fuel economy and reduced CO2 and greenhouse gas emissions for the trucking industry. Uh, along with that, there are changes in engine technology that have taken place in the past 10 years. Uh, things like common rail injection, coatings, metallurgy, all have changed and all necessitated a, a need for a, a new category of heavy duty engine oil. And, and then finally, there was a need, some of the tests that we run in order to qualify products, parts are running out of those, so they will no longer be available. So back in June of 2011, the engine manufacturers came to API and requested a new engine oil category. And in fact, really, they came forward and asked for two new categories. And at the time we started to develop this, the category was called PC11, which stood for Proposed Category 11. That was the name given to it during the development process. Once the, the category was developed, the oils were given API nomenclature, which we'll talk about later, being API CK4 
and API FA4. So to kind of take you through what this process is and how it works for the development of a category, the API, we use an API process that has three phases to it. The first phase of the process, a team is put together called the new category evaluation team. This team is required to evaluate the, the request from the engine manufacturers and lay out what the actual needs are for the category. This process uh, took about six months and can, the team members consisted of oil marketers, engine manufacturers, and that's both on and off highway engine manufacturer, uh, manufacturers, uh, chemical companies, as well as members of the engine, engine test labs uh, and other trade associations such as ASTM and SAE. After the six month review period, the team made the recommendation to go forward with the development of two new categories, one being CK4 and the other one being FA4. Now the actual development of the specification for these categories was done in phase two with the new category development team. And then this team again consisted of members of oil marketers, engine manufacturers, um, chemical companies, and, and different trade organizations, again, ASTM, SAE, uh, et cetera. This was the longest phase in the development process, and it took about five years, starting in December of 2011 and going through till uh, February of 2016. We are now entered into the final phase, which is the implementation phase, and this is the, the timing when oil marketers finalize the development of their formulations and prepare them for launch into the marketplace. Now, as part of the whole development process here, we use a consensus process. Everybody has the opportunity, all stakeholders have the opportunity to, to suggest their comments and opinions, and all meetings are open so that everybody can attend that wants to attend. Let's look at what API CK4 was designed to do. This is just one of the, one of the two categories performance standards that was developed. And the, the main areas for improvement for CK4 versus our current CI or CJ4 products are improvements in oxidation stability, aeration control, and shear stability. Now, the oils that will meet these, this new category for CK4 will be of the same viscosity grades that we have today that meet API CJ4. The improvements in this area will be substantial, specifically in the area of oxidation. And oxidation, just to give you some information on that, is really it's, it's uh, the reaction between oxygen and, and the oil, which can cause oil to, to thicken up and, and uh, become acidic. This happens under a high temperature environment. Aeration is the air entrained in the oil and you want that air to be released out of the oil as quickly as possible. And shear stability is a mechanical shearing or losing of viscosity of the oil uh, as a result of that shearing process. So all these areas were set for improvement with API CK4. The second subcategory we're looking at is API FA4. And FA4 will have the same performance requirements and the same performance tests as we do for CK4 but will be designed at a lower viscosity so that it will provide fuel economy benefits. By going lower in viscosity, we're able to gain some fuel economy and further translate into lower greenhouse gas or CO2 emissions. But when we started designing this, this category, one of the things that we had to keep in mind is that there could be no compromise in engine durability. You know, as our customers, you know, we know that you're used to getting long life, good durability out of your oil, and we would, and there's no way we could compromise that just for a fuel economy benefit. For FA4 oils, these oils will be available starting in December, December 1st of 2016. Now, I'd like to take just a minute to talk about what the two new tests are that are being added to the the category. One of them is called the Volvo T13 oxidation test. 
This is a high temperature oxidation test running very severe conditions. In fact, in my 27 years of working in heavy duty engine oils, this is probably the most severe test I've ever seen. The engine runs uh, as a 500 horsepower engine. Uh, it runs high cylinder pressures, um, high gallery temperatures, upwards of 130 degrees C. And what we're looking at, the past fail criteria on this test, is we're looking at how much the oil is oxidized and how much the viscosity is increased as a result of that. The second new test that we're adding, it was really designed as a replacement test um, for, for a test that parts were running out on. And this, this new test called the Caterpillar C13 aeration test uh, is really designed to look at uh, or evaluate an oil on its ability to release air that gets entrained during the operating process. Uh, this is a relatively short test, but when we got the test finalized and put it into the specification, we made the, the pass-fail criteria more stringent than what we have today with the current aeration test. Now, seven tests that we'll be using in the category, we're calling carryover tests. These are tests that were part of our current CJ4 category, and we will be utilizing those same tests in the CK4 and FA4 specifications. These tests look at soot thickening, they look at uh, ring and liner wear, they look at uh, wear in, in the valve train, they look at piston deposits, um, as well as looking at shear stability of the oil. And in regards to shear stability, and that's one of the areas I said we're improving, we actually are going to utilize the same tests that we used for CJ4, but the pass-fail criteria are going to be much more stringent. Now when I look at the development of the current CJ4 oils and what we're going to see for the new CK4 and FA4, um, these new tests that we're putting in place and, and the amount of tests that have to be run, the actual cost of developing oils is about double what it was for CJ4. So FA4 and, and CK4 uh, development costs are, are about double what they were in the past. And one of the other things that's changing that I want to talk a little bit about uh, is, is viscosity. And typically the, the, the consumer language that we use for viscosity is the SAE viscosity system. Um, if we say a 15W40, we're looking at oil that's got the low temperature flow properties of a 15W grade, along with having the high temperature protection and varying film thickness of a 40 weight. And when we see how those are actually determined, it, it, it's, viscosity is resistance to flow, and in this case, it's a measurement of how long it takes for the oil to flow through a, a viscometer, and that number is measured in, or that unit for the measurement is measured in centistokes and done at 100 degrees C. So, so a 40 weight would be anywhere from 12.5 to 16.3 uh, centistokes. A 30 weight from, from 9.3 to 12.5 centistokes. That part of it is used, I say, for the consumer language to differentiate between a 10W30, a 15W40, and such. As part of the current specification for CJ4, there's also another requirement, and it's viscosity measured at 150 degrees C, and that is called high temperature, high shear viscosity. There's a requirement of 3.5 centipoise minimum. Typical 40 weights will be somewhere between 4 or 4.2 centipoise. The higher the number, the, the more viscous the oil. And as you can see from the, uh, the yellow color on the, the chart in the middle, to meet a, be a 30 weight or a 40 weight and meet CJ4, you're going to have to be above that 3.5. Now with our next generation categories, API CK4, it's going to have the same viscometric requirements. So the, vis the vis grades that you have out there today, 540s, 1540s, 10W30s, will have those same viscosity requirements and can meet uh, or can be qualified against API CK4. 
But we'll also have oils that are lower in viscosity. And that you can see in the blue uh, on the lower right of that graph. And those are going to be defined by a high temperature, high shear viscosity of 2.9 to 3.2. Now, with fuel economy is one of the, the reasons that we're developing this category, improvements in fuel economy and reduction in CO2 emissions. And looking at today's oils and what we'll also see in the, the future for CK4 oils, by going from a 1540 down to a 10W30, we see a fuel economy improvement. And, and here at Shell, when we've done our testing, we've been able to demonstrate a 1.6% fuel economy benefit by going from a, a Rotella T1540 to a Rotella T5 semi-synthetic 1030. As we go forward and move to the FA4 type products, we'll see even greater fuel economy benefits. Uh, we'll see fuel economy benefits around 2% by going from a 1540 down to a, a 10W30 FA4 type level. So kind of to, to summarize here a little bit, we are going to have two subcategories. One of them, API CK4. These oils will, are direct replacements for API CJ4, but with improvements and performance in the areas of oxidation, aeration, and, and shear stability. They'll be fully backwards compatible with the current oils that you use today. So if you're using a 10W30 Rotella T5 semi-synthetic, you'll move to a Rotella T5 uh, semi-synthetic 1030 in the future without having to change anything. Um, they're fully backwards compatible and they're, they're designed for both on and off highway. Now, the lower viscosity oils, the FA4 performance products, are going to mainly be for on highway applications for specific OEMs that are, are recommending an FA4 type product. These products will provide additional fuel economy benefits over what you have with CK4. And backwards compatibility is going to be limited and will depend on OEM recommendations for, for backwards compatibility based on engine types and, and type of service. One other thing to note is some changes that we're going to see in the API donut. Um, for API CK4, the change we'll see is the addition of CK4 into the API donut, as you can see from the upper right uh, corner. That's that basically will be included in uh, use in the API donut as, as CK4. For FA4 is where we'll see some real differences. In FA4, we will see the upper part of the donut cut in half, and the upper left signifying the performance, and the upper right with the API service listed. Additionally, in the upper left with the API performance, you'll see reversed out on the letters and numbers that are used in there. Now, in the slide that we have up there right now, that's black with a white FA4, um, that could be any color uh, used in there as well. It could be red uh, in there as well. So we're going to see that as a change, and that's going to help everyone out there identify what is the correct product they need for their application. Um, kind of in summary here, API CK4 and FA4 oils um, will have improvements in oxidation uh, stability, shear stability, and aeration control. CK4 oils will be fully backwards compatible and used in place of the CJ4 oils that we have today. F4 